Hey, 42 here. Of all the planets that I've lived on, I'd have to say that Earth is probably my favourite. And despite our best efforts to ruin it, it still has some pretty spectacular features, like the jungles of the Amazon, the incredible mountain ranges that litter the Earth's crust, the Great Lakes of North America, and that Chinese takeaway on West Street. You know, the one with the free prawn crackers. The thing is, us humans are a picky bunch and we're never quite happy with the way that things are. There are phones to upgrade, windows to replace, houses to extend and suspicious pills to buy from your junk email folder. But what about the planet itself? Can we fix any of those little issues that have been bugging us for years like how the Sahara is a bit too hot, Australia is definitely too far away from anywhere else and can I just have a bit of Greenland as I really don't think anyone else is using it? So grab a paintbrush and let's see if it's possible to change the planet to suit our needs. Can we edit the Earth? Back in the day, the land was all one big lump, a supercontinent called Pangaea. But the shifting plates have really made a mess of things since then, which is why you can't cycle from Melbourne to London anymore. Remember the good old days. One thing we would like is for the ocean currents to once again flow mostly uninterrupted around the equator, which we believe could act to stabilise the global climate, which if you haven't heard about is doing about as well as global politics right now. Currently, the Americas are sort of in the way when it comes to having connected oceans, so we're going to have to cut through it. The idea is to supersize the Panama Canal to the point where it's a lot more canal and less Panama, basically removing the entire country, much to the annoyance of Panamanians and hat lovers across the world. It would have to be done by a series of underground nuclear explosions, or we could just use a huge pile of Samsung galaxies. The original canal took about 30 years to build and 25,000 lives. Displacing enough Earth to build a Great Wall of China from New York to San Francisco. And no one in their right mind would want to build a wall all the way across America. The US actually spent close to a billion dollars in the 50s and 60s on Project Plowshare, looking at the feasibility of using nuclear weapons as a part of a large-scale engineering project, such as accessing oil, building artificial harbours, and getting rid of entire countries to link oceans together, apparently. There's a fair bit of negotiating to be done to make this happen, and there's no scientific consensus on what the outcome will be, with some arguing that nuking the Isthmus of Panama would actually hasten the loss of the Greenland ice sheet instead of slowing it down, which is probably not ideal. Northern Africa could do with some fresh water, and the nearest river is the Congo. Unfortunately, getting access to it involved working in a region that is still recovering from a civil war that killed 4 million people. So unless you're planning on tiptoeing in with a water bottle, probably best to look somewhere else. And if fresh water is what you want, why not take it from the most abundant source on Earth? The Amazon. Heinrich Hemmer suggested building a 4,300 kilometer pipe that would pick up fresh water from the Amazon River's mouth and deposit it all the way over in North Africa. Physicists have proposed a pipe that will be submerged 100 meters under the surface, anchored to the sea floor. It will be 30 meters wide and have 20 pumping stations to keep the flow going, providing North Africa with fresh water, as well as a number of piranhas. <laughs> Of course, water doesn't just come from the ground, it also comes from the sky, roughly every 18 minutes here in England, on a good summer's day. But what if you want a bit more of it? Well, you could try praying to Lono, Hawaiian god of rain, but since he's also in charge of peace, music and sweet potatoes, I doubt you'll get an answer anytime soon. Dubai are taking matters into their own hands with a plan to build a mountain. The purpose is to force air to rise, thereby creating more clouds and more rain. It sounds great in theory. They already have a number of successful cloud seeding projects on the go, but they are hoping to find a more effective solution before all the groundwater is used up with washing Lamborghinis with horrifically ostentatious paint jobs. The width and height of the mountain are still being decided, and then they can work out how much it will cost but it looks like it will be about half a trillion dollars, or in other words, the average monthly salary in Dubai. 
Dubai is already pretty experienced at giving itself plastic surgery. Since it's been creating man-made islands for over 15 years, the world's second largest man-made island is Yas, and it's due to be completed in 2018. It will be used to create many schools and hospitals. <laughs> no, I'm joking. This is Dubai. It's covered in hotels and a Ferrari World theme park. The various island projects started because the city didn't have enough beach and they knew that they had to grow the tourism trade for when the oil eventually runs out, which it will. The first major project was Palm Island, which was designed to fit a long length of beach in a very compact space. First of all, they needed to dredge almost 10 million cubic meters of sand from a nearby bay, and then they used this, along with millions of tons of quarried rock, in a range of sizes, including huge six-ton blocks, to create the new land. They couldn't have done it without the help of the world's greatest land reclaimers, the Dutch, who consulted on the project. Vlevpolder, near Amsterdam, is the largest man-made island in the world. 970 kilometers squared of land stolen right back out of the sea. One Dutch geochemist called Rolof Schieling had maybe the grandest idea of all. Once again in the Middle East, at the Strait of Hormuz, where the Gulf Sea connects with the Indian Ocean, the water is just 39 kilometers across. Schooling's idea was to dam the whole thing. Once the oil trade dies out, of course, because right now there is quite a lot of tankers using it, and a dam would make them very late for work. Once the dam was in place, the water on one side would become lower than the other, thanks to the process of evaporation. You could then use this difference to generate an enormous amount of hydroelectric power, about 2,500 megawatts in this case, which would power almost 2 million homes. Unfortunately, without the water exchanging with the Indian Ocean, the gulf will get saltier and saltier, so you'd probably kill all the sea life. So, dolphins, you've got about 20 years to start producing electricity for the planet, or you've got it coming. Maybe start farming electric eels, or just give us back all the oil that BP have so generously been donating to you over the years. You don't even drive, you selfish water mammals. Thanks for the view, subscribe for more, 42. Kowloon Walled City was home to over 33,000 people, all crammed into a measly six acres. But there's a man equally as despicable as Adolf Hitler, yet very few people even know of his existence.